Switching it up, defensive line recruiting. Uh, Penn State actually has a handful of talented guys in the region this year. Um, I think, def- especially a defensive tackle, Penn State will get their defensive ends. That's been consistent over the years. They need to get quality defensive tackle prospects. I think it's really important. They need quality and they need quantity. So what, of course, happens? They lose their defensive line coach right before spring practice. Great timing for that one to go down. Uh, Sean, I'll throw it to you. I I think a lot of fans are going to say, oh, who's it going to be? It's very hard to figure out who the next defensive tackle, uh, defensive line coach is going to be. James keeps that stuff incredibly quiet. I, we talked, you know, we heard about Justin Hines, the Chicago Bears coach earlier this week. That doesn't seem to be going anywhere. But whomever it is, is going to have to hit the ground running fast because Penn State has good relationships with a handful of these guys. There were a couple that I felt Scott was in a good spot with. Uh, and now that all has to start over again. And it's happening at a very crucial time, March, April. You know, these are important visits because this is how you lock up your official visits uh, in in June. So whoever that next coach is going to be, this is it. I mean, he's going to get one opportunity to impress a handful of these top guys. And that's, you know, that's going to determine whether Penn State gets official visits or not. That's a great word, opportunity, because that's exactly what's there. Um, You know, for for as much as I like John Scott, we've talked about this since he left, not a dynamic recruiter, not a guy that's going to go out and I think. Uh, while the five stars, you know, he did get denied in a Sutton, obviously, but that's a, a staff, um, a staff effort there. Very curious to see what type of allure the next guy has. Of course, you still got Dion Barnes on staff, regardless of his position. So there's an opportunity to to keep some of those relationships. And I think Dion has relationships with a lot of the guys that we're going to talk about here in a minute. Um, but you have an opportunity to get out there and sort of ride that wave. That new coach bump that we often talk about is 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 real. It's something that we talk more about with head coaches. But this is a, an opportunity for a position coach to uh, really make his name and, and get some, you know, just get a, get a little bit of momentum behind him. So be interesting to see where this class goes. Um, you're looking at maybe three defensive ends, maybe four defensive tackles. It's going to be a big class of defensive linemen. So curious to see what happens. And. As always, when you're taking defensive linemen, there's going to be a couple of projects mixed in there. That's just the nature of the position. You're taking size, length, triangle numbers, uh, all those kind of things that that, that make a good defensive line project, a, a good defensive line prospect. So, um, but but as you said, yeah, there's there's good talent in the region, and that's where it starts uh, with Penn State, obviously. Um, you know, some of these guys, they've had guys that have gone down south, IMG, Ernest Willour uh, is one of those guys, uh, David Polly Polly um, at Hem- Hempfield was supposed to go to IMG. He's back at Hempfield. So uh, that helps, but you've got an opportunity for these guys to um, really, um, I don't want to say establish themselves, but sort of reinitiate reignite is probably the best word um, for this process because Penn state, you're looking at some of these guys as maybe the leader, maybe in the mix type things. Now this is an opportunity for the next guy to, to vault Penn state above that. The the guy I keep hearing the most about when I, Who's the most important defensive tackle prospect? Everybody seems to agree. Jordan Thomas, Don Bosco, uh, certainly a top guy. The the one thing I'm just hesitant on pushing really hard for is those people also say that he's also talking NIL a little bit more than some other prospects. Uh, And usually when I hear that, um, as we've talked about many times on this podcast, there's two games being played right now. There's the SEC game that's being played on the recruiting trail, and there's the Big Ten way, uh, which is, you know, for the most part, Ohio State, Michigan, Penn State, they've done things uh, a little bit differently than Southern School. So obviously there's a long way to go. I don't want to I don't want to uh, write Jordan off or anything like that, but that's just something consistently being brought up uh, right now. So let's see where, where things go with that. I will add in Benedict Ume is so, so important here moving forward because – is he a D tackle? Is he a DM? I'm not exactly sure. That'll get sorted out with time. I think I think he grows into a D tackle. But Penn State does have some early momentum here for a guy who hasn't been on campus. Uh, they're very close with his coach, John Hooley. Uh, they seem to have built a pretty good relationship. And it's not just John Scott there. Like Stacey Collins has been probably one of the most consistent coaches when it comes up to getting to Avon Old Farms. I think that's been really important uh, for Penn State here moving forward. So keeping an eye on that, I would also add Jared Smith. Um, he, he and his brother, Jacob, they just transferred to Cheshire Academy up in the uh, New England area. They're originally from Kentucky, I believe it is. So do they, you know, do they have more interest in some Northern schools? Do they have more interest in the Southern schools? 
Uh, but we'll have to kind of see. I think that'll kind of get sorted out a little bit here uh, in the weeks ahead. But also D.D. Holmes, too. I don't want to forget about the Gonzaga defensive line prospect. D.D. has been up here, uh, I believe, twice already. I think D.D. primarily played defensive end, as you're kind of seeing here on the film. But he's going to grow into a defensive tackle. I think right now we have him at 6'6", 240. I mean, he can easily add 40 pounds with that frame uh, and, and be playing interior uh, in, in no time. So let's see where those things shake out. I, I have those guys – those five, when you include Ernest Willer, of course, too, as the five most important, I'm kind of on the bubble with David Polly Polly a little bit. I want to see a little bit more from him. He's getting great offers. I just don't know if he has quite the the length as some of those other guys you mentioned. Uh, and let's see. I mean, I, I I really enjoyed watching David last year. I watched him play against Exeter, has some good plays. Uh, just want to – I'd really like to see him at a camp or something like that going against right. some other top guys. Go ahead. Yeah, when you, when you take a look at these 300-pounders that can move, like their offer lists are – Probably better, you know, we've talked about this before. It take it, there are certain positions where uh, average prospects are more valuable because of the positions they play. Defensive tackle, absolutely one of those offensive tackle we talked about last week. Um, so a guy like Polly Polly's offer list has absolutely blown up. Even if you're not completely sold on him, you have to be in it at this point. And you have to continue to uh, recruit him with vigor. Um, and then then you're going to get the information that you find out later. Uh, basically, can he move uh, like you like you hope that he can move? And, and he's obviously a strong guy. Um, so, yeah, I, I like those guys as well. Um, Willer is interesting to me. He's at Maryland, uh, I believe, tomorrow. He says he's going to visit Penn State in the summer. Um, he's been up a couple of times uh, originally from Baltimore. So we'll include him in this for the, uh, for the, for the sake of including regional guys in there. Uh, Jordan Thomas, man, um, you mentioned him a little bit earlier. Uh, very important cause just because he's got that prototypical size. I mean, you can, you can nitpick a bunch of these guys because maybe a guy is six – two uh rather than six four or something like that but you know when you've got the protocol prototypical size to work with and you know he's active he's a guy that's uh that's been very much in there. there there's a lot to like and ume um started looking at his film this morning uh there's a lot to like there man like he, i he's self-reported six five two sixty is he that big i don't know uh, hopefully he is but even if he's six three two forty like there's still a lot to uh, like there. Yeah. wrestling background um interesting mix of being more raw, you know, being a raw prospect, but not being as raw as I expected because he's from Canada. And, you know, the, the guys that come down from there, you you have a, a expected level of rawness. So he's right in that sweet spot where there's a lot to like there. And I'm, I'm curious to see how his recruitment takes off. We like attach the rocket ship to him for uh, rankings. I think he's 24th in the country <laughs> on, on three. It might be a little bit high at this point, considering uh, where, where he's coming from and all that stuff. But uh, there's, a, there's a lot to like with Ume. I think he's a very important prospect for Penn State. 